Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shefali Welch. I'm a Simon School alumna from, 20, from 2002. We're just going to give it a minute so everybody has a chance to join. All right, why don't we get started? So as I say, good afternoon and welcome to our second school update with Dean Shevin Yeltekin. My name is Shafali Welch. I am a 2002 full-time MBA graduate and I join you virtually today from New York City. As the proud chair of the Simon Women's Alliance, I am pleased to be hosting the session today. We are excited about Dean Yeltekin's energy and plans for the school and know you will feel the same at the close of our program. Please utilize the Q&A box throughout the presentation. Questions will be addressed at the close of Dean Yeltekin's remarks. So Shevin, let's get started. Thank you very much, Shefali. Yes, I'm very happy to be here to give a second update since the beginning of my tenure at the Simon School. And I'm going to give you a few updates about what is happening at the Simon School, as well as what's been going on and what our plans are for the future. So next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about fall, um, you know, as we have sort of come to the end of this year and had even in person commencement ceremonies. Um, life never stops as soon as one thing is over, we start planning for the next phase and of course fall teaching modality is a big question that we've been asked about that we've been planning for and we will continue to plan for as CDC and New York State guidelines uh, change. Um, as you may have heard, the university is requiring vaccinations for all of our students, um, with some exceptions, but um, we expect a, a lot of our students to be vaccinated before the August 1st. Um, In-person attendance is going to be required by us for full-time students or strongly encouraged for part-time students while we continue to offer a high flex approach and high flex approach is where you have the faculty in the room as well as some in person students and then we also have zoom participants that's to accommodate the health uh, issues that might still be prevailing uh, we have a lot of visa and travel challenges still that we are trying to sort through and the students are getting their visa appointments and arriving in rochester and we also need to make sure that we do offer vaccinations and before the vaccinations, some quarantines um, for the students. So there's going to be a little bit of still sort of rough and tumble in the fall, beginning of the fall uh, semester as we sort of navigate to yet a new normal, uh, but hopefully on our sort of path to a lot more normalcy uh, pre pandemic. So next, please. I want to give you a little bit of an update about where we are with admissions. Here we have the full-time MBA admissions. This is data as of April 23rd, so about a month or so old. Um, we have the applications number here, and as you can see, we've had a, a bump up in our application volume for the class of 23, which will be the class that will be arriving in the fall um, of, of 21. And we have admitted about 232 students with total confirms about 92 and 50 of those are domestic, 41% still holding strong are, are women, and the average work experience, which has been around sort of hovering around five to six over the years, is still around that, and with a little bit of a bump up in our GMAT scores as well. And the average GPA is very close to what it has always been um, over the last sort of five to six years. So all in all, really good numbers um, going into sort of the end of this particular recruiting cycle, but we're not quite finished yet, as we say in, in sort of higher education, until we really see the students in the classroom sitting down, you know, recruiting is not complete. So next slide, please. And here's the MS admissions. Um, I want you to look at those numbers, the application numbers for our MS programs. As you know, we have the MS in accounting, MS in finance, MS in business analytics, as well as in marketing analytics. So these are giving you the combined rather than breakdown for each of the different, uh, different programs. Last year was definitely an unusual year. So compared to last year, we're down a little bit, but I do want you to realize that compared to historically, uh, not, not compared to the unusual year of last year, we're doing still very well. We've had uh, 600 more students kind of apply to our programs. Um, we've admitted about close to 2000 students and we have total confirmed of 521. Now that's a number different from last year. Last year recruiting cycle was a little bit uh, 
somewhat different, uh, mainly because we sort of had another um, uh, admission deadline open up later on. So that's a little bit of an apples to orange comparison. The better comparison is actually with 2020. And as you can see now, the sort of the confirms by program, we have a very strong finance, MS in finance program, marketing analytics is continuing to grow quite uh, uh, soundly. Accounting program, which took a little bit of a COVID hit, is bouncing back. And business analytics is also continuing to grow very uh, heavily. So all in all, we have great admission and application numbers to report for you. Next slide, please. And now we turn to some really good news as well in terms of our, our sort of ranks. And I want to hand this over to our senior, associate, uh, senior assistant dean, uh, Rebecca Lewin, to um, introduce you to LaTanya. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Great to have you on today's call. We're so delighted to be able to share all the exciting updates. And I do think that the one that I'm getting to talk about is one of the most exciting over the past few months. Uh, this is actually uh, the beginning of Latanya John's second week at the Simon Business School. And uh, her joining us was the result of a national search uh, and a very significant pool of candidates. And so we're just delighted to have someone who comes with not just career services experience, but business school career services experience uh, and uh, more than 20 years in total, most recently at the Neely School of Business at Texas Christian, um, but also working experience at UT Austin McCombs, um, as well as a Rochester Institute in Technology. And so as you have the opportunity to, to get to know LaTanya, you'll realize there are some personal connection points and prior time spent in Rochester, uh, uh, then many years in um, different roles in Texas and now back to Rochester. So we're really excited. Uh, I will invite LaTanya to take herself off mute if she wants to very briefly say hello, uh, but the bottom line is there's going to be lots of opportunities in the weeks and months ahead between corporate and alumni engagement activities, uh, and uh, hopefully at some point the uh, opportunity even for face-to-face -face, uh, events where we'll uh, look to have her meet and get to know more of you. Thank you, Rebecca. And I'll just address the elephant in the room. Yes, I have on a mask in my office. This is my last souvenir from Texas. I had an oral surgery and I'm still a bit swollen today. So I'm wearing my mask, um, but I am so delighted to join the Simon School. For years, I have held Simon in such high regard. I've seen your students in case competitions and career fairs. I have just really gotten to know um, a lot about the university and the school through my interview process. And I am very honored to be joining you. Looking forward to the days, weeks, and years ahead. And thank you again for such a warm welcome for all of you who I've met already. Well, welcome, Latanya. We're very happy to have you join us, and we'll see you again uh, very soon in person. Um, let's talk about the student outcomes after talking about admissions and application numbers. Here's our MBA year over year. And again, this is sort of towards the end of April, the comparisons in year on year comparisons between the class of 2020 and class of 2021. Um, we have the internship numbers as well as our uh, full time offers. Um, I don't have to tell this crowd that it's been a very challenging time in business. It's been a very challenging time in sort of recruiting for our students. Um, but despite these incredibly challenging times, as you can see, our students are doing well. They did well last year, despite sort of all of a sudden emergency COVID shut everything down and kind of put a, you know, definitely had a, we had a disarray um, and, and a very different environment in terms of, you know, remote internships as well as remote um, uh, interviews, but our students are poised very well. And, and as you can see, at the, by the end of April, 73% of our class of 2021 had offers and 63% had accepted. And you have the dollar amounts there of our total compensation. Total compensation is a little bit down, but it's just still fluid. It's still ongoing. We don't really sort of, um, you know, close this down until the students have almost been graduated and then have about uh, three to six 
six months to complete their kind of uh, recruiting cycle. On the internship side, it was a little bit of a slow start. I won't lie. It was certainly uh, there was a lot of sort of wait and see on the part of the companies as well. But it has really picked up lately, and we have 74% of the class um, by the end of April. And that number has moved um, since then as well, but those are the full numbers that we can report today and 57% had accepted and these are the mean base salaries. So there's a little bit of a dip in the salaries as of April, but we continue to make great progress with our students in an incredibly challenging year. Um, as far as the MS programs are concerned, these are the outcomes and, and again the, the reporting is reflective of data collected at the end of April uh, and the class of 2021 data is not final until we get to December of 2021. Um, there's a little bit of a mix here that you're going to see, for example, when you look at the finance students MSF, um, you'll see that there's actually a larger amount of offers percentage of the class that received offers is 70% as opposed to the 44% at the same time last year and the acceptance rate is also higher. Um, sort of the MSBA, we see a slight bit of a dip um, also in the MSA, uh, but on the other hand, the marketing analytics program, the MSMA program, uh, you can see that we have a larger percentage of offers and a larger percentage of accepts. So again, you know, this is not complete, it's ongoing. Um, it certainly has been a sort of a slow year. There's been activity, but in terms of sort of companies making decisions, um, they've taken their time not more than usual so we're still continuing to see quite a bit of sort of activity and we will report a more updated data as it comes along so you know we continue to help the students we continue to support the students and and those of you on the call who have helped with internship and and also placement opportunities and making connections for our students i want to give a big shout out to you and and a break great big thank you from the from all of simon um, those are incredibly important opportunities and connections um, for our students um, so we're it's very very uh, much appreciated so thank you talking about connections we are very pleased to introduce simon connects an industry-based network of simon business school alumni current students and faculty um, it's powered by our great Simon Alumni Board. Um, we seek to build a strong global community and a network that actively connects Simon graduates to one another and the school throughout their lifetime. This is one of the things that I had been also hearing about since I came into my role, that um, not only the connections between the current students and or even the prospective students and our alumni are important, but it's very important to have that alumni to alumni peer even after many years of graduation as folks change, of course, roles or they change industries or they stay in the same industry but they have uh, a more uh, perhaps a different role and you know we do a lot of geographic events but this one particular silver lining of certainly having uh, this technology enabled outreach is that we can now connect folks who are in different geographic locations, but do have the same sort of interest or roles within the same industries, so we have um, launched five Simon connects groups on LinkedIn. This is part of our two way alumni engagement plan that I have been talking about since I came in. I think it's this is a key priority for Simon's uh, for uh, Simon's strategic plan, um, because I do believe that, you know, I see that almost uh, a hundred of you are on the call today, uh, even a health of half an hour of your time is extremely valuable. I know that time is our most scarce co uh, commodity. We love to connect with you. We love to hear from you. But I also want to be mindful that the connections we provide and the content we provide is actually useful for you and valuable for you, um, other than just reporting out some of what's going on the news at in our um, Simon School. So the groups are consulting, consumer packaged goods, financial services, real estate, tech, and media. Certainly, we don't cover all industries right now this is where we started from if you don't see your industry listed please complete our form on simon connects webpage to become a champion for the next round of industries to be considered and we will certainly get to work on that as well so please do do sign up if you haven't done so 
our advancement sort of uh, priority for this year has been a one year, but not, you know, it doesn't end at the end of the one year, um, is the Together for Simon, um, which, is a, which is sort of the Together for Rochester campaign at the university level and Together for Simon at the school level. We've had four priorities, um, investment in our future leaders, being able to bring in, in you know, great talent in as our students um, is one of our, of course, major goals and gifts for scholarships and student emergency funds help accomplish that, especially in a difficult year as this year. Um, admissions referrals and volunteering are also welcome. Not all of the contributions need to be on the financial front. I know that, again, your time is extremely valuable, but we would like to utilize the Simon community um, as best as we could to, to help us attract and retain the best talent. We're a knowledge creating enterprise without intellectual capital and intellectual talent. It's hard for us to import all of that knowledge into our classroom so that we can actually train the next generation of business leaders. So gifts for faculty research, curriculum innovation, or attend a panel. I know some of you have judge a case competition. I know many of you have share your expertise. And again, many of you have. And if we just continue to engage this way, these are incredibly valuable engagement opportunities for our students and for the school. So I want to thank those of you who have done so. Those of you who are looking for opportunities, we are have a variety of opportunities and we can give you more information, connect you with the right folks as well. So please reach out to us. Equity, inclusion, and diversity is one of the pillars of our strategic planning, as in it's sort of being woven into the entire strategic plan and certainly has a renewed focus at the Simon School. We are one of the sort of the uh, first members of the consortium and supporting our consortium scholarships, our other equity, diversity, and uh, inclusion initiatives, as well as joining our Simon Women's Alliance. So to the ladies out there who have not joined yet, so please do so. Those are all great ways for us to continue to foster leadership and innovation, especially amongst our underrepresented groups. Um, so please do continue to support that initiative as well. And career opportunities. I just showed you some placement numbers. And again, thank you to those who have provided opportunities for our students. I think it's going to continue to be a challenging environment for our students, not just the remainder of this uh, calendar year, but just the repercussions of having lived through a pandemic for a variety of industries, as well as a variety of, of um, kind of markets is going to be challenging um, for another year or two years. So any help and any connections and any support you can provide there is deeply appreciated. I also want to do a big call out to um, our uh, National Council member and our Board of Trustee member, and of course our alum, Evans Lamb for a scholarship challenge that he put forth. Um, he he established a $500,000 scholarship challenge at the Simon Business School. We are incredibly grateful to uh, Evans and the, the Evans Lamb Opportunity Scholarship Challenge is designed to encourage others to create new endowed scholarship. And he also contributed $100,000 to an unrestricted scholarship fund to be put to use immediately. So thank you, Evans, and those of you who have also participated in that fund. We're in the midst of a strategic planning process, right? I mean, when I last spoke to you in this particular sort of update, we were still in a lot of firefighting mode. There's still some firefighting going on, but I have taken the time since sort of the early year, um, most definitely since about February, to spend time and to reserve time for our strategic planning process. We formed four working groups and the working groups, these are representations from our uh, staff and, and uh, uh, as well as our faculty with intake. And I hope some of you have had an opportunity, uh, certainly voice your opinions through the, the web uh, designed um, sort of the questionnaire that we had. The four areas are global student recruiting and career support. We do have a lot of international students not only come to get educated at Simon, but continue to then um, be placed in global companies. So we want to make sure that uh, we do that in a very thoughtful and a connected way. The future of education, 
Um, certainly, this was in our minds before the pandemic hit. It has certainly become even much more focal area uh, for us as we think about what is the business education, not just the content of the business education as we look into a post pandemic world, um, but as well as the modality. How can we, there are different flexible and accessible ways that we can offer education so that more students and more talent can certainly come into our midst and, and get the training and get the great education that we offer at Simon. One other thing that we're concentrating on at the future of education is also the experience. And they, it's sort of marrying the science of business with the practice of business. So experiential learning is going to take also a center stage in this. As I've said before, investment in our intellectual capital. And I don't define intellectual capital only by the research scholarship that goes on within within the school and that's certainly a big part of it um, but i'd like to define intellectual capital reaching out to our alumni as well as our staff and as well as our current and and prospective students because the wealth of information the wealth of expertise and experience that you have that you bring to us either by participating as guest lecturers in our in our courses or you know being featured in a panel or doing some mentoring and judging this is an incredible sort of wealth of uh, knowledge and, and wisdom that if we weren't to tap into it in a very thoughtful way that we would be uh, certainly missing out. So where do we want to invest? We're a relatively small school, but we have some really powerhouses in, in certain areas of finance and accounting and you know digital marketing and, and so on. So we want to really continue to invest in these very strong areas as well as form a, I, I know that there are, um, there's, you know, continued interest in entrepreneurship so we want to make you know use our resources in a thoughtful way and the two-way engagement you're here i'm here and again you know if both inviting some of you um, into our uh, classes to take some of our classes, as well as engage in a series of webinars, series of sort of content uh, delivery. We want to make sure that you come back to your alma mater, not only because you want to come back and give back to the school, but also when you do spend that time that it is an engagement that is uh, certainly delivers some value for you. So we will continue to do that as well, not just with our alumni, but with our overall community, with the Rochester community, as well as our uh, student staff and faculty. We also have an equity, diversity and inclusion action plan, which we are weaving into the rest of the, the four pillars of the strategic planning that I was talking about. I'm not going to go through the entire slide, but you must have known and heard by now that we were uh, tagged as the number one most diverse MBA program. That was certainly not a, a chance happening. It was the result of more than a decade of tremendous amount of work, both by our admissions uh, group, as well as our student um, engagement folks and our faculty and, and, and staff to make sure that not only we bring in diverse talent into our midst, that the experience they have while at Sound and continuous is, is a good experience. So that when they leave our, uh, our walls, that not only they have uh, received an incredibly good education, but they have had a very good experience where they can bring their uh, full self and 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 certainly their backgrounds as well as their goals and ambitions. So we need to make sure that we continue to recruit and retain diverse talent, and we need to have training and development. This is professional, curricular, co-curricular, and operational training and development, as well as form some community outreach and partnerships, and that can be corporate partnerships as well. I know there's a lot on the slide, so I'm, I know we have precious little time, so I'm not going to spend the full slide uh, to, you know, talking about the full slide. But one thing I would say is that Simon is a place where you can come and engage with not only diverse, well-trained, incredibly talented group of uh, students, but also with students who, no matter what their background is, with geographic, racial, ethnic, nationality, who have worked in with teams of very diverse students and can be allies and change agents themselves. So certainly, you know, look to us for recruiting and look to us for doing some partnerships in this domain as well. We can't wait to have you on campus. Here's a few pictures. In just in case you don't remember what it looked like, because it's been a while, but our Office of Student Engagement, our Descani and the Silva Investment Lab, our Mark Quillen Colonnade, Eisenberg Rotunda, 
Jay and Jean Bennett Career Management Center, our admissions office, and that's me with a mask doing my high flex uh, introduction at orientation on the right hand side. By the end of the summer, eight of our 11 primary classrooms will be fully renovated too, so we'll have even more shiny, great space for us to welcome everybody and those who can't make it to Rochester. We will have actually renovated classrooms to be able to welcome you in a virtual setting as well. So with that, I'll leave a few minutes for questions. Wonderful, Shivan, thank you so much. I, uh, I will remind everybody to please use the Q&A function for questions. And maybe after all of that fantastic information, I'm gonna start you with, with a fairly easy one. Uh, we had a question from Ron Fielding about vaccination requirements for our staff and faculty. Can you just update us on what those plans are? Yeah, so we have had various discussions at the university level about requiring that as well. Um, not many schools have done so. Uh, some of it has to do with sort of being able to abide by uh, kind of the state and federal laws about what we can require of employees. Part of it has to do with the fact that the vaccines are on emergency approvals rather than sort of unlike, you know, the flu vaccine, which is beyond the emergency, which is on regular approval. But what I think we should at least be able to get the data on is that how many of us are voluntarily already vaccinated. And I can tell you that at least sort of anecdotally, as I look at my team, I haven't yet met anybody within our staff and within our faculty who have not been vaccinated. And I have been in conversations, of course, with everybody. So that's really good news. So even if it's not required, I believe that in our own community, uh, we're going to hit a very high kind of, you know, herd well, you know, above herd immunity numbers. I don't have the exact numbers to give you yet, but we are working on at least in our reporting structure to see who has and has not been vaccinated. So far, the uptake has been very high by the Simon community. That's wonderful to hear for everybody and true. Yeah. Um, a question uh, that I will ask you, but I also saw a comment about this. It is fantastic to hear the news that Simon is the number one ranked program for diversity. So the question is how, what are we doing as a university to advertise this more? And then also how are we leveraging this information through our career center to enable uh, companies to do stronger outreach to us? Yeah, so th those are perfect questions. I mean, one of the first things that happened um, with the sort of that ranking coming through, and, and I, I, I want to just take a 30 seconds to explain the background in that ranking. We knew that, you know, the ranking agencies, as you know, that rank us sort of like within an inch of our life almost seems like every other week. We knew that there was, with the questions that they were testing us, we knew that such a ranking was in the works. We didn't realize that it was going to come so soon. But we sort of stumbled upon it and 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 then realized that you know this this was already in the works. This was already announced. And as soon as we got the word out, I convened a group of our our staff and faculty and said, "How can we actually tell the story of Simon?" both from sort of a marketing but especially from sort of you know as we could do go do corporate outreach this is a, a school that you need to come to uh to certainly employ very well you know trained and talented diverse uh group of students as well as students who have who know how to work uh with with very diverse talent so what we have because there isn't a lot of very specific data and you know we are analytic <laughs> little nerds at heart and we wanted to collect as much data as possible it's really hard sometimes to measure the exact immediate impact right so what we are doing right now instead is that we are writing a case study about Simon and that in that case study we have interviewed and some of you on the call may have already been interviewed we've interviewed students faculty staff as well as our alumni about the sort of the story of Simon their experience here at Simon and about what they have learned and we are developing three case studies one to go exactly on a sort of a marketing journey generally speaking the other one to be sent out to corporations and a third one uh, or potential employers and a third one to our peers peer deans and peer schools to tell the story of Simon, how we cultivated this over the last sort of decade and a little bit longer. And that's where our journey is starting. And you will actually um, see them coming through very soon. We're in the final stages of sort of looking through these case studies. And hopefully, as we become more intentional about doing some sort of a panel uh, of tracking both students and our activities, we can be a little bit more sort of, you know, um, quantitative in reporting some of the outcomes out as well. 
Wonderful. Uh, as we, we are all eager to see this information used to the advantage of the school and of course our students, faculty, alumni, everybody. Um, we are at the end of our time. So maybe if we can just end with how people can get more engaged. You had a wonderful slide that showed us where there are scholarship opportunities. There are opportunities to get involved as panelists and judges in the consulting competition. Can you just let us know what is the best way for alums to reach out back to the university to say, hey, we're interested in doing more for our students and alums? I mean, the easiest way really is that since you're all receiving information through Kate Kutaya, who's our great alumnus, you know, reach out to her, anybody in our alumni relations or advancement team, you can certainly send a message directly to me as well. And we are eager to hear from you. We have, you know, we can send you all of the information about how to engage with us and the different opportunities. And I know, again, time is, 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 is definitely our most scarce commodity and you can pick and choose about how much time that you do have to contribute so please reach out to kate and you can also certainly reach out directly to me and we will connect you with the right folks and we'll give you the right information so wonderful shevin thank you so much for taking the time latanya welcome to the simon school community we're so excited to have you on board um, and to all my fellow alums thank you so much for joining us today and for taking your time um, and we look forward to seeing you on the next simon update have a great afternoon everyone thank you Thank you very much.